Hello and welcome to Films and That, the show where we talk about films that usually don't get talked about. My name's Rob Turnbull. And mine's Sam Hall. And Sam, what, what are we looking at this week? Uh, this week, it's Hard to Be a God, directed by Alexei German. Hard to Be a God is Russian filmmaker Alexei Germain's interpretation of the novel of the same name, by the novelists Arkady and Boris Strugatsky. It involves the exploits of Don Rumata, an undercover scientist from Earth living on an unnamed planet in and around the city-state of Arkanar. Here he stumbles around its mud-filled streets, living amongst its simple inhabitants who are, for all intents and purposes, a society not unlike that of medieval Europe. So this world is not unlike a parallel Earth, uh, where the society never progressed past the Dark Ages, essentially. And uh, there's, there's a, uh, is he a duke or a count, someone that is going around and just killing everyone that shows any signs of intellectuality or any signs that he's going to progress the society. He's just yes. shutting it down, basically. Don so. Reba. <laughs> Essentially the villain of the program. Uh, program? Don Reba, uh, he's uh, a high official, he's not the ruler of Arcana, um, but, but he is essentially esta uh, establishing a coup, um, and he believes in a society where there is no intellectualism, perhaps because it's easier to control. Uh, this isn't specified, any of this, but um, we kind of get the sense really that this is a society that's been in decline for quite a long time. Intellectualism seems to have been dead for a, quite a while anyway, there's elderly people um, sort of stumbling around who can barely string a sentence together. So the protagonist of the film is Don Ramata. He is a scientist from Earth that has been sent there to progress the society past the Dark Ages and bring around a renaissance. And he goes about doing that by uh, rescuing int intellectuals, is that what yeah. he does? Uh, yeah, anyone, well essentially anyone who's been persecuted by the villainous Don Reba. The conflict between them is what the film revolves around in terms of plot, um, but then again, you could interpret this film as not having a plot. That I don't think that's true, but certainly from a first viewing, you know, I, it's almost it, it would appear to be something almost plotless, just a a ghost train ride through a kind of land of horror. The visuals are the most interesting point of the film. The mise en scène is great. The cinematography is great. The costumes, just everything's so muddy. Everything's so wet. Yeah, they, they've taken a long time to create a society that hasn't um, taken a long time to make, <laughs> you know. And it's it's mainly violent, loveless, ugly, very ugly. There's a lot of crap on people's faces, did you notice? Yes, um, yeah, just about everyone I think who's seen the film and reviewed it has referenced Monty Python's Holy Grail and a famous line, they say, who's that? Oh, it's a king, how do you know that? He's the only one who's not got shit all over him, you know? <laughs> but in this, even the kings have shit on them. Everyone has, everyone has shit on he, them. He puts it on himself though, it's like, everyone else has just got mud on their faces for whatever reason, but he's just happy to slap it Again, on himself. Yeah. Either he's been there so long, he's become accustomed to it, and he's, you know, or he just know, he's just trying to join in. <laughs> I think he's just gone mad and he's just, that's just his way of life he now. He would go mad, I think, living among, <laughs> among this, in this society. As grotesque and ugly as it is, it, it's, it is beautiful. I would like to talk about uh, that there's a, a famous Russian literary critic called Mikhail Bakhtin. The particular thing he talked about was the grotesque. That is the idea of spitting and vomiting and sneezing and shitting. <laughs> All these things, um, there being things that kind of overturn religion, I guess, you know, and th things that are considered abhorrent by civilized society. Um, civilized in Bakhtin's interpretation, I guess being the bourgeoisie, uh, you know, the upper classes. And so in that respect, these things, uh, they're almost rebellious in their nature. They're almost like, they're a display of rebellion and, and the rising of the working classes, if you want to take that interpretation. And I think to a certain extent, that's kind of one of the things that this film appeals to me, perhaps, is that um, almost that, that kind of ugliness, to me, liberating in a way. So this film is a hard sell because to describe it is to describe something very visually unpleasant. Um, but I suppose in a way it's, it's like a freak show, I guess. Um, 
you know, which it, which it in itself is something unpleasant and exploitative. Um, but that is, that's a good way to describe it, I think. It, it's like we're exploiting the lives of people that don't exist. There's a few people with sort of uh, deformity makeup. I tell you what, yeah, actually, uh, perhaps this is a good time to move on to the more technical aspects. Um, and imagine just the, the hours put into the makeup, for example, and the mise en scene. Every shot has been thought out, like, extensively, I feel. Yeah. The camera is shot mainly in very close-ups. Mm. So you just kind of looking at very small bits and slowly other weirder and weirder things get uncovered to you. There are moments where you sort of think, what's that doing there? You know, <laughs> but that, but that's, that's part of the, the, the appeal, I guess, is, is that you're, it forces you to look around yeah. um, and see things and notice things in the background. Did you, did you notice a little T-Rex on his shoulder at one point? Oh, no, I, I don't remember this, but I've, I've, I think I read that. It's um, like he's got um, the main character's wearing some armor, and he's got yeah. like a, just a little T Rex on his on his shoulder. Which, what? Why? Why, why would that be there? <laughs> well, the the other thing, his 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 arm is very decorative as well. I like his his glove. He's got like a clawed glove. Yeah, like, that's gauntlet. like his um, his uh, signature thing, isn't it? Yeah. What about perhaps the more? Because uh, we talked a lot about the disgusting aspects that are almost comedic. But what about uh, again talking about the mise en scène? Uh, some of the the really unpleasant stuff. Some of the violent stuff. Yeah, some of it does go pretty far. Yeah, there's a, there's a really great moment when someone's been like strung up, on they're they're on like the side and they're all their intestines just fall out or something. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really gross, but it's really well done. I feel like it's just, it, and he's just poking at it as well. Well, it, you don't expect it to be there, and it, I don't, it's not like it made you really in frame to begin with. And it's just mm. like, oh, he just stumbles across it. Oh, there's this thing. But it must have taken so much effort to put that there. And that must have been the major bit in that scene they were filming. But it's kind of not throwaway, but it's just like pushed to the sidelines. Like you're just uncovering all these little bits. You know, like we were talking about Vertmeier's harmonies, how the camera lingers before and after the action takes place. This does kind of the opposite. Mm. You know, the action takes place and then the camera just kind of stumbles across it and then the action goes off over there, but the camera's looking here still. Mm. You no, know, it's like you just catch the middle part of the action. Like a, like yes. a documentary would, yes, almost. That's, yeah, you should say that. <laughs> that's, I have said it. Have you? Yeah, just now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought you switched it off. I thought you'd switch it off. <laughs> no, it's recording. Well, we, we, yeah, I know, but we were just having a chat. <laughs> <laughs> that's fiendish. There are times when you wish you could control the camera, essentially, <laughs> because because you you do feel like you're missing things sometimes, um, and that, and that's part of the. Well, you like a bystander, aspect. aren't you? Yeah. You kind of go, oh, there was a big war and everyone died over there, but you weren't there, so you didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, you still see things, but um, you know, perhaps yeah, in a disaster, do you do you see everything unfolding before your eyes? No, you don't. <laughs> you, you hear a, yeah. you hear an axe, you hear an explosion or something, and then you run over and you look at it. Yeah. You know, and that's that's part of what the, the the feeling this film gives. You know, and and sometimes you're just seeing someone do something, and you're not sure why they're doing it or what they're doing. You're left to interpret it yourself. I think that's the, yeah. the big point. Yeah. Of it. yeah. Such as such as Dom Ramata when he's trying to convince himself not to attack people. He does this thing where he puts on a, a, a sort of bull like helmet and sits in on all fours in like this position as if he's sort of ready to charge, you know, which is presumably the interpretation. But but then you're sat there going, what's he doing? You know, <laughs> he just looks like he's mulling around. It's about stumbling upon something without, without it. nothing's explained to you in black and white. Even though it is black and white. Even though it is black and white. So what are your final thoughts on how to be a god? Um, I think this was always intended to be a, f a filmic interpretation and an experience. I, I don't think it was ever intended to be a, a, a entirely true to the original novel. It's, it's, it's not meant to be the Bible. It's not meant to be you know, an entire story that, that, that teaches you about life and everything. It's supposed to be an experience and you're just being dropped into it. Um, so in that respect, I guess it's, it's, it's realist in a way. It's an interpretation of, uh, of what you would, what, how you would experience the world rather than how other people would experience it. I liked it the more I thought about it after I'd watched it. There's lots of nice things to visually see in the film. Every shot has been well thought out. Mm. You can really appreciate the attention to detail that's gone into it. But I did get a bit tired of it watching it. It didn't need to be three hours long, did it? 
No, it didn't even need to be five minutes long. <laughs> um, that maybe that's the point. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's supposed to be grueling. Well, well I know it must be. That, it yeah. is supposed to be grueling. <laughs> you know, um, but if you can get through it, then hooray! You know, you've you've walked the the fire walk. Obviously, nothing happens when you watch a film. You just watch it. But I felt so dirty after the last time I watched it. I needed to have a wash. <laughs> Did you actually? Actually, yeah. <laughs> That's how it, it made me feel so dirty after watching it. That's such a cliche. It is, but it's true. Okay, that's it from this week on Films and That. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you next time. Like and subscribe. <laughs> you can cut that out if you want.